One year ago, in November of 2020, the first ever NES bike was assembled and rolled out of its garage on Winding Waters Way in Raleigh, North Carolina. The nearby running trails off of Falls of Noose River were roughly a mile and a half between entry points, and this is where we would create something entirely new, never before seen in gaming history. Running and gaming was a completely new challenge, one that requires the player to also be in shape. It actually required me to get back into shape as well, when I had time after getting laid off during COVID. You might ask, how did something like this ever come about? I've always been about wellness and overall positivity, trying to genuinely do what I could to make the best out of the situation. So when COVID hit and the travel industry collapsed, my near six years with Enterprise came to an end. Over the years, forced to be out of the house about 60 hours a week, with no chance of it ever being less than that, managing an operation that's open from 7 to 6, over the years, I had to bury a lot of ideas, but I wasn't sure what else to do since it felt like my best option. As soon as the travel industry collapsed and Enterprise was also getting ravaged, as did everybody else affected, this is when I realized I finally had the chance to dive into the channel as hard as possible. So I basically grinded almost the same hours on content per week since I could finally dive into my passion and let so many ideas go that were suppressed over the years, but after only a couple weeks of doing this, I could feel it really negatively impacting my mood since I just felt like crap after a while. If I wasn't going to run around at work, I needed to at least try to work out again because I felt awful. This was when I was recognizing the struggle to balance for myself and spent a lot of time thinking about how to deal with it the best way. At some point, I was wondering, aside from giving tips on wellness for gamers, how do I incorporate both wellness and gaming at the same time in some type of challenge? I imagined the most basic of exercises to try while playing, going on a run with a game and a TV in front of me. I figured putting one above the rear wheel of a bike would be the best way to make this happen. I say best and not easiest because it's not the easiest way. The easiest way would be to jog on a treadmill, but that's assuming you want to buy a treadmill in the first place. But secondly, and most important, it wouldn't be nearly as entertaining. Jogging on the trails, we get to see the great outdoors get fresh air, from a warm, humid morning to a cold, nearly freezing December attempt. After nearly six years of a slightly to moderately active retail slash office job, I was not in running shape. I had to get prepared for this once I had the idea. There's no way I could run for long enough to actually get through a game or comfortably enough to focus on what I was doing. So while I was working on other uploads, I was going on two to three runs a week, but just for one to two miles, so I could actually handle running for longer and slower times, which is the whole idea behind interval training. For the first several attempts, my lungs and calves got absolutely obliterated. They just weren't ready for it at all. But after a few weeks, it was getting better. I started choosing the two mile route more often than the one and opposed to feeling like I was going to die after two nine minute miles, a month and a half or so of practice just a couple times a week got me pushing just under seven minute pace again. Once I could finally run again, I knew I had to practice playing the game while standing, then rocking back and forth, making sure to get all of this down before having to deal with setting up the real thing, which got pretty darn cumbersome and annoying. With video capture and splitter cords, a laptop, the NES, a TV, and portable battery that could power everything for about an hour. The five episodes were raw and uncut. Sometimes they got a bit lengthy, so today we're going to talk about and show what I believe are the top 10 moments from those first five episodes of running and gaming. More of these would have been made, but after moving from Raleigh to Somerville, I'm four hours away from my partner in crime. But we'll briefly talk about next ideas for the series at the end. Without further delay, here are my top 10 favorite moments from the series so far. Number 10, getting the dang thing to work. No, I'm just kidding, that's not actually on the list. But seriously, getting an NES to not freeze and work on the go is a huge pain, but for real this time. Number 10, getting a fist bump from this random kid on a bike that stopped to watch us during our Battletoads run, already three miles in. It's fine. Good morning, guys. What's up, man? Nice, thank you. Interactions with others on the trail sometimes got pretty funny, which ties perfectly into... Number 9. The double takes throughout the videos. Was definitely pretty funny to see the footage afterward of how many people looked around to see what in the world we were doing. We had a few funny moments with people that actually spoke up, which we will see further on the list.
Number 8. Getting through Contra without the Konami code while running in the dark. Tackling this tough NES classic, only starting out with 3 lives is no laughing matter. Toss in running at the same time, while at night? It's one of the most bizarre and disorienting challenges out there. I came dangerously close to getting a true game over, and the run close to being cut short. You might wonder, what was I doing attempting it at night? Well, that's because we were busy earlier that morning with... Number 7. Playing Contra with an old coworker and friend, Richard, using the Konami code. This intro alone, using the WCW vs NWO Revenge music from N64, really helped put this whole thing over the top. Even had help from a local gamer, Mark, a guy none of us had even met in person before this moment. He rode his longboard near us for additional shots, which plenty were used in the intro. This ended up being a really tough challenge with less than desirable play, along with the sun glaring the screen non-stop, plus Richard unfortunately re-aggravated previous issues with his knee and ankle. But with the heart of a lion, Richard hung in there for those couple of miles until we both made it to the finish line, with Contra on two-player. I'm just pounding it as hard as we can. Well, we got through it, dude. <laughs> got um, through it. Well, Richard, in closing, like, how was your first running while gaming experience? That was incredible. <laughs> I'm in pain from head to toe. You know what? It is worth it. It is totally worth it. There's one more little thing to point out about this run that we all died laughing at afterwards since we didn't notice at the time. Number 6. I mentioned our new buddy Mark no. helping with recording on his longboard, and I just about lost it when I was going through footage to see that he hit an acorn. Most importantly, he didn't get hurt. It's already ridiculous that Richard got hurt during this. The last thing we needed were two people getting injured just from attempting to play Contra while on the go. Speaking of funny things that happened while we were out there. Number 5. There were a few decent interactions we had with people. Yeah, after a while. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The Nintendo! <laughs> or like when this dad jogging with the stroller wished me good luck on the run. <laughs> More <a> man. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Then there are those moments that make it seem like there's a straight NPC in real life. Like when this lady had one of the most we'll unintentionally funny stretch. quotes ever. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it'll make you win. It makes you wonder how in oh the world this gosh. lady thinks a game works. Maybe it'll make you win? Like you're just playing the game and then all of a sudden the game decides, BAM! You win! Credits roll! Such a ridiculous thing to say, impossible to not become an inside joke immediately. Next time you see a family member or friend playing a game, please say to them, maybe it'll make you win, and just look for their confused reaction. She, she said maybe it'll make you win? I don't even know what she meant by that. Number 4. Playing Ghosts and Goblins on December 20th in near freezing temperatures. Yeah, it's about as Apparently awful as it sounds. Really. Come on. It's a cold one today. A game that's horrendously what? difficult and stubborn, that combine that with cold hands while running? You're not exactly setting Jeez. yourself up for a good time. It didn't help that Ghosts and Goblins was being extra heartless that day. There are plenty of examples, but oh, yeah, check this out. I'm at the very end of level 2, only 6 minutes oh, into the run. All things considered, I was doing great. But look at oh, what happens man. here, as the timer is winding down. There's no time, but watch this, the key's falling. We, you, we died with the key falling. The level was complete, oh, both bosses yeah. were defeated, with three seconds left. But Ghosts and Goblins doesn't care, you can die even as the victory key falls. This was a pivotal moment in the run too, as it resulted in me being stuck on this level for almost 10 more minutes. Overall, after 5 miles of torture, while on the final level before the last boss, it really gave us the cherry on top to summarize exactly how this run was going. Oh, oh I'm glad that- What just happened? Thank <laughs> you.
just complete, utter garbage, and I hope to get revenge on this title one day. Speaking of difficult titles, though, number three, Battletoads. There are a lot of concerning moments in this infamously difficult title, and the vehicle sections, especially Turbo Tunnel, are the most infamous of all. Getting through these levels is one thing, doing it while jogging had me pretty worried to say the least. Surprisingly, unlike with Ghosts and Goblins, this run was going really well for the most part. With each of these sections being so pivotal for the run, saying I was ecstatic and relieved to be through them is an understatement. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! With how well the run was going, you may wonder how it all ended up. Amazing! <laughs> Dude! Number two, reaching the final level in Battletoads before the power went out. Over our lengthy trip of six miles with Battletoads, we started to encounter some AV buzzing, which wasn't good at all and didn't help make the experience any easier. And unfortunately, some of those mistakes and delays lasted a few minutes, especially in level 11, Clinger Winger. I also had started to make some mistakes on level 12, the final stage in the game, and when your portable battery only lasts an hour, this is what can happen. Gosh. About 75% of the way through the final level, over 50 minutes into it. I would love to get revenge on Battletoads at some point and post an official world record of it, because getting through a game like that while on the go seems like a pretty historic feat. Speaking of world records though, that brings us to the final moment on the list. Number 1. Beating Ninja Gaiden while running. Everybody knows Ninja Gaiden is synonymous with NES hard, so when I was able to get through it while running 3 miles at an 8 minute pace, you could say we had a lot to be excited about especially if you know what happens after just one death on the final boss with its three forms. You get sent back to 6-1, the beginning of the world. Before we had the GoPro stuff, we actually did an unrecorded practice run where I fell at the hands of the absolutely despised second form four times in a row, and after nearly six miles, I had to give up on trying to finish the run during practice. This guy can be a total nightmare, and I think it's fair to say at this point, he's held millions of players back from ever having a chance to finish the game. So when I faced off against this challenge for the second time while running, with the cameras on, it's pretty easy to understand why I was so excited to get through it. And then shortly after, being the the first and only person in the entire world to beat Ninja Gaiden while running at the same time. Okay, come on. This is huge. Ah! Yeah. Come on! Come on! Yeah. Oh. Okay. Come on, get through. Really careful. The ninja guiding wall running. What? It's complete. Yeah. Didn't, didn't get sent back. I appreciate you all for taking the time to watch this video. The running and gaming series has only stopped due to being four hours away from David, like I mentioned. But one of my favorite quotes out there, sometimes your dreams are only sleeping, they're not dead definitely applies to the running and gaming situation. There will be more running and gaming at some point. There is revenge to be had, many more games to try, either consoles on the bike, and fun challenges to come up with, while incorporating overall wellness at the same time. If it's your first time to the channel, I hope to earn you as a subscriber, and for everyone else, I appreciate you being here to support Marmax Gaming. I hope all of you had a great Thanksgiving, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.